Right, hello everyone and welcome to the Sure Art Podcast. I'm your host Ross Baxter and today's is episode 8 of the series. Um, we've, I can't believe we're already 8 episodes deep. But today we've got character artist Ali Glenn on the show. Um, thanks for coming on man, how's it going? Yeah, not bad man, it's, it's no problem at all. You doing alright? I'm doing great, thanks. Um, so, before we get into the series, um, as, as if you're new to the new to the podcast, basically what we do... Um, is I always uh, bring on industry professionals and pretty much talk about their journey of what they do, how they got there, and so forth. And in the in like the closing, I guess, time of the podcast, we bring in the main conversation of student education as a whole, and basically talk about like the do's and don'ts of the um, of the student education system and mm. like how to get it better. But um, thanks so much for coming on, Ali. Um, no, that's all right. Thanks for thanks for having me on. That's cool. Anytime. Um, so I guess let's just get started. So the first thing is just just introduce yourself and uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, where you're working so far. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, I, I'm Ali Glenn. Uh, I've been working in the industry now for almost a year. Uh. Before that, it was, I mean, I've gone right back, maybe, on this, the start of this journey, I suppose. Uh, I started doing, I did, I did um, a year HNC in graphic design. Okay. And then two years HND illustration, which, um, you know, was, I kind of, all, like, that's what I thought I, was, I wanted to do. Yeah, um, probably spent about a year or so trying to get freelance gigs, and uh, just never really went anywhere. <laughs> just trying to get get the roots. Yeah, yeah, but it's, the freelance stuff's pretty pretty tricky to try and get started in. But then after that, I just decided right, um, let's uh, try university. Okay, and um, so I did went to the, onto the computer arts. Uh, degree at uh, Aberdeen. Awesome. In Dundee. And uh, after graduating, probably it was a good couple of years before I actually finally <laughs> managed to get my foot in the door and uh, <laughs> start working in the industry. No, of course. So it's been quite quite a long time, um, quite a long time coming. But you finally got. Finally, th- yeah, things are kicking off. No, that's awesome. And um, it's all good. It's all good so far. So. Perfect. So, obviously, um, obviously, you're doing character art and so forth. And um, I take it you're like pretty much you started off with two D doing concept design, and then yeah. then started dwelling into three D. Uh, was it through university you got into three D? Uh, yeah. So sec- second year at uni was when we, you know, we were kind of forced. <laughs> <laughs> to do 3D as okay. part of like a, a module. Um, I was a bit reluctant at first to, to get into it because, yeah, like you said, I've, I've, I started off in the kind of concept art side of things and I always thought, yeah, this is what I want to do, try and push my, my 2D art. Okay. So, yeah, it's a bit apprehensive doing 3D and at first I, I didn't really like it at all. I was um, What, doing 3D? Yeah, I mean, because you're you're forced into Maya, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, you're, you're like, it's like, oh god, what's this software I need to learn now? Like, Jesus, and it's just up, you know, you're, you're totally lost. It's a lot to hit you with straight off the bat, uh, especially when so, you're starting off. Yeah, so I'm I'm just like, oh, screw this. Why are we doing this? And then, but eventually, you know, it's uh, when I got my hands on ZBrush, um, it was kind of like, oh my god, like why have I not been doing this since the very the very start because I've always I mean even though my, my, my 2D skills were not bad but I, I kind of like just adopted 3D sculpting really well for, yeah. like, somehow and um, you know as far as like a, a learning curve is concerned Definitely. you know it's what, what I'm talking about it's just like and yeah it's, I just found it a way come- a lot more fun than um than drawing yeah um it, i think because that was similar with me because um obviously you taught me a lot of um a lot of uh the tools when it came to zbrush and when it came to uh 
it was because of Ali. My um, it was because of two people uh, in Ali's year, so including Ali himself and another guy called Aaron Humphreys that got me into yeah. ZBrush and uh, pretty much got me, I guess, learning the basics. And like you said, it was like um, when you f- were first introduced to ZBrush, it was it's it's such a great software, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's like like you're not limited by the whole concept of polygons and it feels so refreshing just to be able to like obviously there comes a point when obviously there's so many polygons but it's just it's like there's so much creative freedom when you're using zbrush and that's exactly yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's like, I mean, when i started at maya and it's you know it's all box, box modeling kind of stuff mm-hmm. i'm just like oh, like where is this going like how <laughs> How have I meant to make a character out of a cube? You know, <laughs> definitely. And then you go to ZBrush, and it's like totally, you know, it's, it's sculpting. So you're like, oh, it's you know, so much more freeform, and um, yeah. So it was really ZBrush that got me started on on the 3D kind of aspect of things, and then Perfect. I was like, right, 3D character art. This is what I'm doing, and, you know. So how long have you now been doing? So you said s- since second year, so. Well, oh yeah. How, how how many years have you, have you now been doing three D? So cause probably six years, seven years. Uh, not that long. No, four four years. I think four or right, five. Okay. Years. Yeah. Gee whiz, yeah. it's like yeah, because like your your sculpting's insane, and that's another thing. Is like uh, everyone who's listening to the podcast, make sure to go uh, follow um, Ali on Art Station. He's got such great artwork. Um, he even shows his, his concept art through 2D as well. It's not just his 3D work. Mm. And um, as we're going to discuss um, in the podcast, like obviously the most obvious cliche topic of all, but it's one thing that I like to talk about. And since Ali is actually our first character artist on the podcast, um, obviously we'll be talking about software, a wee bit of portfolio. And I think one of... Yeah. Alongside ZBrush, I am... I'm pretty sure it's uh, safe to say that Marvelous Designer is also one of your favorite software. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, that's that's a, a given, you know. I mean, it's totally different kind of workflow, uh, Marvelous, but the results you get from it are... Um, so when it comes to yeah. um, your portfolio, um, or shall I say just portfolio in general, um, I take it... You start off in Maya, or like, what? Can you go over briefly a bit f- about your pipeline and so forth? Yeah, um, as I start uh, straight straight in ZBrush um, with a sculpt, high poly sculpt. Uh, you know, get get all that stuff out of the way and looking and looking good to start. And then, you know, you've got the laborious task after that of um, retop retopology on the on the high. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's pretty pretty basic workflow. I mean, you're doing okay. high poly, retop, and then uh, UV mapping, uh, and then do, doing all the baking and um, texture work. Awesome. And then you know you then for presentation purposes, you know you can go into posing and stuff like that. Um, yeah, pretty pretty basic uh, so workflow. Fairly just kind of like the normal trend and and so forth. Um, in yeah. terms of and then, like, I mean, in amongst all that is like different, you know, uh, different kind of methods that that I use because you know everyone's different when they come to sculpting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like ZBrush is so versatile. You know, you can there's a myriad of different ways that you can get the same, the same results. Uh, I guess, um, like, one of the, like the main things like I was learning from. Um, both you uh, and Aaron um, was one of the things you said to me was um, the importance of base meshes, and uh, uh, like um, obviously it depends on the the piece uh, that you're working on, I guess. But it depends on like I guess obviously it depends on if it's creature or character and so forth. But mm-hmm. like how like do you use base meshes still a lot, or is it or is it literally just pretty much from scratch? Uh, I mean, it well it, it depends on like. Like if it's a personal piece, it just depends on uh, what I what I really need, what I would really need a base mesh for. It's, it's typically, I mean, I just take the a lot of the time just take the the neck human male Z tool. Okay. And then because that's like a decent enough base mesh, and then 
sculpt on top of that. Cause, like, but only if it's um, if it's like a human character, which is typically all I've I've, I've done really is human characters. So yeah. and, and that's there's the the proportions are uh, are pretty much there in the Nick human male thing. Although I wouldn't like you know if you're just starting, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I mean, because you need to you obviously need to learn anatomy and anatomy sculpting and, and all that stuff. I mean, it's if you're just going to use that without, you know, doing the groundwork first, uh, you, you know, you're, you're making a shortcut that's like not really going to help you. For long term uh, or just yeah. in general. Yeah. Because like, that's one of the things, I guess, is, um, I guess it's one of the most talked about discussions just overall is um so many people when they're posting uh, work whether it's on 10k whether it's on these forums and so forth mm. and a lot of people are trying to i guess develop their eye for their work um one of the main things that you see straight away is poor anatomy and um, it's so cliche in terms of people talking about it but so many people don't realize um i guess how important it is in terms of um people, oh, yeah, yeah. people always want to do like making things look cool and stuff but things can't like look cool unless you get rid of the canny, the uncanny valley, or whatever the phrase is. Um, of like, like, you just need to get anatomy correct. If the anatomy is wrong, the whole the whole piece is wrong. Yeah, like I mean, and it's anatomy is not just something for uh, realistic stuff. I mean, it, it's style for stylized work, and you you need a good understanding of anatomy. Mm-hmm. Even you know, even. Even cartoons, you know, cartoon characters, the thought, like, even though they don't look realistic at all, there's still yep. an essence of anatomy and good proportion yep. that goes into them. I mean, even like, he goes with like Rick and Morty or something like that, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they've got like, like spaghetti arms, you know, but there's still an essence of anatomy in there that, and then when you put the audience or whoever's looking at it, look at it. They, they, you know, they can they can connect to the character more because it's grounded in some kind of um, you know realistic anatomy, Definitely. so to speak. Because you can recognize. So it does, it, yeah. yeah, it translates translates across everything. So I mean, if you're going to take shortcuts, then you're not doing yourself any favors at all. Like, you, you really need to uh, get that get get those fundamentals in there first, because you'll see it a mile away. And and if they if they you know if they don't get it right, it's just going to be a detriment to to the work later on. Definitely. Mm. Would you? So obviously, since we're talking about anatomy and portfolio so far at the moment, would you say, in terms of, obviously, it's down to like your situation that and being patient in that. But I I take it people should just focus on purely just focus on male and female anatomy first before trying to actually maybe focus on an actual portfolio piece so probably just start actually crafting away at even like for example using like life drawing as a base as well like not yeah. just not just digital but traditional as well trying to get that whole route grounded and build it from there yeah definitely because i mean but i mean when i started out doing 2d I think that's like do, doing two D for so long. I think helped me tra- make that transition into three D because right. I already had like kind of a like a decent understanding of of anatomy drawing, mm-hmm. and um, you know I did life drawing classes at, at uni and all that kind of stuff as well. Perfect. So yeah, that 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 all that stuff helped me big time. You know, moving into into three D. Awesome. And um, yeah, it was more like just trying to like learn the, the tool essentially of, of ZBrush that was more only like um, kind of roadblock there right okay that was uh, like the next the next place the next hump to get over yeah so so stuff like you know drawing and, and life drawing and all that it's um, like hugely beneficial to to your 3D work mm-hmm. and you know even yeah you know do start off just doing an, like simple anatomy sculpts um, before trying to tackle any any real fleshed out character. Yeah. Because you see, you do see a, uh, a lot of people trying to, you know, make like a like a, a real time game character for like the first, you know, the first work or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, but when you when you do that, then you, you you do get bogged down by the technical side of stuff far too much, and then you know you're like you're worrying about the render or something like that at the end of it. But it's like, well, it's not going to look good if you don't have the fundamental stuff to begin mm-hmm. with, you know. So yeah, focus on that and getting getting that really, you know, on point, and then you can think about you know designing a, a full character and. And making a good portfolio piece, you know, for perfect. The first thing I think it's like um, one of the things when it comes to, I guess, maybe it's just a trend that a lot of us are seeing. But when it comes to, I guess, the way things are done, both educationally and just in general, with, um, I guess, this decade or this generation over the last few years, is that people are when they're going into these education, well, I don't know, teachings and so, so forth, obviously it depends on uh, where you are and the cost and so forth, whether you live in America or whatever, but yeah. it feels like a lot of traditional skills are slowly fading out in the sense that <coughs> people are, um, like, for example, when it came, comes to me as an artist, one of the main things for me is, I guess, I generally just jump into Photoshop, if you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 like obviously, I can use a tablet and so forth and start sketching stuff out um, to help me with mm-hmm. design. But if I had a better foundation with, uh, I guess, design through traditional methods, I'd be a lot better. Um, so whoever's li- whoever, if you're all listening today, um, just make sure to, like like Ali said, c- keep with the fundamentals, focus on that, because it takes years to get good at, good at these things. And um, oh, yeah. it's, it's not right. something to rush. And too many no. people... I guess, like you said, Ali, they're trying to jump the gun too quickly. Yeah, because I mean, like, but it's different for for everyone. I mean, like, some people can, you know, if you're talking like if, if you're talking about talent or something like that, some people can just jump in and take like only a couple of years, and you know, the, the, the space of a couple of years they've they've come on leaps and bounds. But someone yep. else may take way longer to 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 um, get to that stage. But there's there's no point being uh, disheartened by it because you know everyone can get there if, exactly. they, put the time, if they put the time and working. You know, it's it's not a question. But I mean, like talent can play into it, but it's not it's not the be all and end all. You know, you can you can still get to to their level. Just make make just take it a bit longer. Definitely. Um, so to carry on from uh, this topic um, of portfolio and so forth. Is there anything that you wish, um, I guess you're, like, as a character, a character artist specifically, is there anything you wish you you learned at university or college, like if you had the chance to go back and I guess maybe um, like what would the improvements you would add to the course? Mm. Um, well, I mean, personally, like I said before, I mean, like the, the good thing I got, you know, was kind of discovering that right 3d is really what i should be doing mm-hmm. um i mean not not totally scrap 2d but like this is what like i wanted 3d character art for games is really the the kind of path that i, that I should be pursuing mm-hmm. um so that's like the good thing i got out about well, like one of the good things at least that i got out from from going to uni uh in terms of like what I wish they kind of had, it's I can imagine it's like kind of hard for tutors or, or lecturers to both do their job on a teaching basis, but also keep up with the industry, so yeah. to speak. You know, um, it's got it's got yeah, it's got to be difficult because they're not. I, I mean, even though like pre- their previous experience. They have, you know, they have got experience in the industry. It's, it's. I can imagine it's quite easy to like, like, kind of slip out of the, the techniques that that are that are coming to the forefront. You know, so it is a lot of. For me, it was a lot of self-talk kind of stuff. You know, yep. I, I had to go in, you know, learn about like PBR workflows and and all that kind of stuff because, you know, we never really got taught about any of the kind of real time you know what the engines are how how they're how they operate now 
because it was uh, yeah speak, like speaking of that because it was um once again it was uh you that got me into pbr workflow um, <laughs> yeah through sub- substance painter um yeah. and it's like um it's like you're saying there when it comes to self-taught i i think i think it comes down to i think this question comes down to the main um fact that it's down to identifying what um teachers are meant to offer i think a lot of people give too much demand for lectures in terms of the fact that like people expect to always get the best of everything or like mm-hmm. they they think they're going to get a certain um skill set specifically for their for their own use like for example if an environment artist or a character artist goes to a certain education they might expect that there's going to be definitely a person in that um university or college to be an expert but that's not the case it, that's where the topic of um like you said there self um being able to uh, self-teach yourself comes into yeah. play and it plays such a huge important factor just overall in general yeah um yeah exactly because like i said i mean i can i mean these they've got like like however many students that they, that they need to to cater to but every one of the, like the for the computer arts course at Aberdeen, for example, it, it encompasses a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, environment art, con- uh, concept art, like three D character art. It's like whatever like the students want to do. It's all encompassed under like the, the games media kind of thing. So it's like, you know, the the tutors have to, or like, I mean, you know, whoever's um, setting up the course or. Um, like the curriculum or whatever, they have to accommodate for all these different interests. Yeah. And so, you know, you you're ultimately going to feel like, well, well, they're not really focusing on this too much. And it's like, yeah, but you've got to understand, like, games especially, like just media, you know, film and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's very broad. I mean, there's like so much different, like even the technical arts that kind of stuff, rigging and doing all this animation and all that you know it all has to be catered to yeah so that's where yeah that's why you inevitably like it's self-taught a lot of the time the good thing about university is it does give you that environment where you're you know you're working with like-minded people yeah. and and but well particularly Aberty, you know you've got the open space kind of studio setting which is you know kind of reflective of what a lot of sh- you know, professional studios do operate like. So you do have you, you do have that uh, aspect to it, which is good. I and, think. Uh, oh, on you go. No, no, no. On you go. Man. No, I was just going to say, like, because um, obviously, um, so far on the podcast, I've got um, a lot of my friends and so forth onto the podcast uh, from Aberteens. Um, I I love Aberte University. Like I've, yeah. Um, we were spoiled for choice, and I understand like a lot of. Uh, um, for example, you guys out there, you might not have certain education uh, teaching um, at a certain level um, where you are, but um, don't ever let that affect where you're wanting to go. Um, no. Like Callie was saying about the idea of self, being able to teach yourself, it takes a lot of discipline to be able to um, knuckle down and just get on with a piece. And like some people um, really struggle to focus for like an hour of work. Like believe it or yeah. not, one of the average. Uh, this is this is a crazy statistic. Actually, I was reading the other day. One of the right. most average statistics when it comes to being able to focus purely on something is only five minutes as a human now. Like five minutes of being able to just <laughs> what I, <laughs> five I, minutes? I, I, no joke. This is generally one of the things I was re- uh, been reading about because I've been reading like crazy. When it, <laughs> when it comes to like not getting distracted at all by anything around your environment. Um, we have went from I think it's like fifteen minutes down to five minutes. Our ability to not get distracted from like social media. You know media, what? You, you know what? Crazy. I, can, I can actually believe that. <laughs> it, it's it's just like when it comes to like your it, it, five minutes sounds about right. Yeah. It, it's, it's it's nuts because people have all these small habits that they they don't realize they're doing. And yeah, um, it's just it, like oh, oh, what's this on YouTube? I'll just I'll just watch this for a bit and then like yeah, <laughs> it, it's crazy and it's like. Being able to like, self-teach yourself, so for example, um, when it comes to this podcast, I'm not saying that you have to go to college, you have to go to university, however, I do mm. always say it's good to go, because um, as Ali was saying there, it's about being surrounded about the people that you want to be surrounded by, yeah. and being around, um, I guess, character artists, um, 
and people with the same interests um, as you. And at the end of the day, that's going to elevate your skill set overall. And yeah. you're going to find, um, like we said, at Arbertay, um, so we're, we live in Scotland, and um, and Arbertay, um, because of that broad spectrum and broad range of, um, I guess, artists, we then pick up small little, um, what's the words? Just we get things from different artists, like the, the UI artists. There's certain things you can use that in the future and so forth. So right. yeah, that's um, awesome. Uh, so that's other things. Um, it's, it's an ex- it's an experience as well. On top of that, you know, I mean, exactly. You, d- I, it's, I don't believe. No, it's it's not it's not necessary. I mean, to go like. You, all the information is there for you online that you need, you know. <laughs> so you, you can teach yourself through YouTube videos and all that, you know. Um, you know, if you don't want to to rack up the debt and uh, and all that, um, <laughs> you can do it. And I don't. I mean, I am not. Uh, I, do, I don't have any idea of like recruitment or anything for these guys are looking for but yeah you hear it time and time again from industry professionals it's like look you don't really the, the portfolio is all that matters you know i mean a degree is an advantage i mean well you know it, it's it's a good thing to have on your record because it mm-hmm. shows commitment and you know de- like well dedication and, and the, you've put the work in um you know for, for you you've committed four years of your life to to get so that's kind of work, you know. Yeah. But um. So would you say you know, they're, they're not they're gonna, but they're they're not going to pick like just because like a guy's got a degree if he's not as good as like the other person and the other person's not got a degree then they're they're going to pick they're not going to pick the guy with the degree over the the better artist you know. Yeah. But yeah. um, it's yeah like it's the experience and being in that kind of environment that open plan studio kind of environment where you're all feeding and bouncing ideas off of, off of each other is um, a big help yeah. definitely because it's like at the end of the day it's about um, the, the advantage of going to university or college um, is getting the right information and getting the information that's not going to slow you down it's going to give you that extra um, step in the right direction and propel you forward to um, in front of your competition yeah um, right, so, so. But that comes to down to, obviously, you, you don't want to just choose anywhere. Like, at the end of the day, like, one of the main to- topics on a previous po- um, podcast was understanding the university before you go there mm-hmm. and looking at through the prospectuses. For example, if you're a character artist, they're, um, with the growing trends, um, like we were saying, of online uh, tutorials and so forth, there might be certain things that benefit you better. It depends because... In my portfolio and Ali, Ali's portfolio, obviously my main thing is environment art and Ali's is character, but there's certain things that uh, teachers can't teach you, unfortunately, um, because obviously they only have so much time. So it's just down to finding the right information um, and it's going to propel your portfolio. And on the topic of portfolio, when it comes to, I guess, getting jobs as well, is that the thing is, is that everyone's always trying to, I guess, tailor things to either a certain studio or ask or answer the question oh what do i what do i need to do to get there and that's Mm -hmm. and that's where the big debate comes into play because it really depends and you have to understand this and this is why i always tell people to be as honest as possible uh, with themselves so when it comes to your portfolio um i guess one of the main topics i i guess would be um good to discuss i know you were just saying it's it's hard to know what people are looking for but um is there any things in your portfolio you think has like I guess helped you um, in terms of like for example your art station like I know layout plays a big part of it the amount of renders that you show for example like they they're very keen on seeing wireframes if you know what I mean yeah all right right. yeah yeah okay like there's there's quite a few things like certain I guess certain companies are looking for I'm not sure there's anything that comes to mind uh, that you could maybe share with us that'd be great Mm -hmm. um yeah well yeah you I mean, but you, you can have like you don't, you don't want your portfolio to be cluttered with everything you've done. Um, you want a few good pieces, but they really want to see all the kind of technical stuff behind it. So yeah, they want to see 
the wireframe, they want to see the topology and and all that, the all the technical stuff. You know, the the UV maps that look like the textures and all that. They they do want to see that kind of stuff. I mean, it's all well and good having like having it presented really nicely, but whether it's actually going to be functional in a game is a different matter. Mm-hmm. So you really need to to have all that kind of stuff on show. But um, I mean, our station. I don't know. I mean, like I, I approach that kind of. I mean, I've got my my own website, right? Um, but my art station is, and like I, I've had like recruitment guys kind of tell me that I should um, clean it up and uh, get rid of a lot of like the two D kind of stuff that I had up there, and okay, and um, yeah, just strip it back in general. But now I'm I'm. I kind of I, I, I kind of want to show, show like your whips. Yeah, well I, well, I want to show whips and and like you know for like whether it's mar- marvelous designer patterns or, mm-hmm. or stuff like that. I do I do kind of want to show the backbone to everything. Yeah, that goes in it. Then that's on like on, on my art station. So I'm kind of going to approach it just as like a, a dump more than anything. Okay. I think I think uh, one of the like one of the one of my favorite posts of your art station is one of your breakdowns on how you made a certain piece, and yeah. I think um, like the, one of the series that um, one of the personal projects that you've been working on, um, you've got all these different character designs that are like cyberpunk, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and because of that series that you've got. Um, I think that that plays a huge part in terms of highlighting what you're capable of because it's sh- it's shown literally a step by step process like you're discussing, which I think is very key because everyone always um, obviously everyone likes to see pretty pictures and stuff, but obviously the you want to identify um, to the employer um, like what you can do and how you did it mm-hmm. and just being very honest and direct. Um, so don't. If you're working on a, a piece with a few um, a few friends and stuff, you have to be clear on what you did and be um, as like honest and straight to the point as possible because they won't be able to know like what you've done. It's simple as that. Aye, um, aye. And um, obviously, there's quite a few things on ArtStation in terms of, I guess, like your CV and stuff. But um, the main thing is like like Ali is saying is keep it keep it clean, keep it simple, but make sure that you're showing types of work i guess that you want to do um a lot of people obviously go to these companies and um like they'll be asking them on linkedin for example like it was one of the common things i've done in the past i'd be like right so what type of art do you want in my portfolio um for example if, if it's a character artist case and you want to work for them specifically then do the art that you want to do that tailors towards them mm-hmm. and make sure that your portfolio hi- highlights that if you're showing tanks or you're showing something else I personally would say strip it out, um, uh, as it's like it's not giving a clear image to what you want to do. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you're, I, if you're if you're applying for a role, um, like a character art role, and you've you've got very little character art, you know, even if it's like great, you know, generalist kind of art, mm-hmm. like props or something, yeah, you're you're not going to get far with. with um, you, you do need to tailor your portfolio, and you know, at, like Art Station, you you can use Art Station as as a portfolio. I, I think if you if you if you want to, I mean. Um, do you think uh, it's better doing? Do you think you've had more success having your own website, based on your own experience? Because I know, obviously, like there there can be a, a. It's such a big question, so I know it's kind of hard to answer in in the fact in the fact that there's like such a big debate over. Uh, like art station kind of leads well, everything, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but I've, I mean, when I had, um, I had an interview for for Rockstar, and they were just, they they were solely going through my art station. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> they didn't really pay much attention to to my website. Okay. Um, it was on my, my art station kind of stuff, and um, yeah, even like then, my, then it was like all cluttered with all sorts of different stuff, you know. Right. <laughs> so I have kind of cleaned it up a little bit now. Okay. Um, no, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Mm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say ArtStation is like good enough. 
Perfect. Our portfolio. So now that we've talked about portfolio, we've talked about um, certain aspects of um, his journey and so forth. Uh, I guess the main thing we'll now t- uh, bring in is the. Obviously, we've discussed it, but um, we'll now bring in the main questions of student education. If that's all right, Ali, mm-hmm. when it comes to the podcast. So I always ask a few um, questions. And I've asked everyone them so far, and the reason why I've asked them is because I'm like I like to get the the best advice possible for these students and for anyone who's wanting to get into art. So the first one, I guess, um, I, let's actually let's start with the big one. Let's let's, let's start off with the fun one. Right. Um, <laughs> so the this is the, the the I guess the biggest question I always ask is, um, would you say people should go to um, university or college um, over online courses I know mm. it's a de- this is a very debatable question but I like to just kind of like see where people's thoughts are on, on this subject matter um, because obviously we've discussed um, the benefits of going to uni like for example being surrounded by students and so forth mm. but is there any other things you think education has above these online courses uh, I've I've kind of hit you with a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, I reckon the the online courses and and that are, are I mean they're going to be tailored to exactly what you feel like you you need to do. So yeah. you're you know you're, you're paying for decent content. I, I assume uh, this can focus you a lot a lot more. Than you would if you are, you know, if you're a student, it's just you're you're kind of like me, uh, but this like oh yeah, I want to do 2D, but then you're but you're kind of floating about like oh, I don't really know if I want to go into film or game, you know. Uh, the online courses I, I imagine are going to help you kind of focus on what you're really interested in, mm-hmm. um, but then. I mean, the, like, there's the question of money that comes into it as well. I mean, exactly. Like, yeah. You know, if you've got, if you got the money to spend on these courses, or would you be better off like taking out a student loan and um, uh, going to university for four years? I mean, like, you can't deny that university as as an institution is very important. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, your degree uh, or, you know, doctorates or whatever, you know, they're internationally recognised. So you've got that, you've got that, you know, you, you can get that at the end of it. The advantage. Yeah. Because, um, like, one of the things um, I've always liked about um, the idea of university is the fact that when it comes to recruitment really, jobs abroad, they, they like, visas and stuff is based off having a degree. And yeah, that's right, yeah. played that's played such a big thing in the reasoning why I went because mm-hmm. I knew based off um what um a few people were saying to me when I was in um secondary school that certain jobs just demand a visa um no a degree in order to get a visa as quick as possible or you're gonna uh, be waiting yeah. or you're gonna be waiting so much longer. Right. Um so that was one of the main reasons I instantly was like universities for me because it gave, it gave me that edge in terms of um, a, a person who's a recruiter is not going to be like, oh, he he lives in this country. It's going to cost us way more money. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's based off your portfolio. Yeah. Like You have to be good enough, but but by having that um, degree, you have an advantage. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, they're going to look at that and it's like, well, this guy's highly educated on, yeah. you know, on paper. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to, Kind of, you know, sp- speed this guy through the process. I, I don't really know <laughs> how visas work or whatever, but yeah, you, I mean, you raise a good point that that is going to give you an advantage if you're needing, if you're needing to move overseas. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's always a bit of a, a an interesting question when I ask it. A lot of everyone's always had like a little pause, <laughs> a pause in between because I, I like yeah. to get I like to get that truth out like instantly. Because yeah, I'm, I'm like, because I'm, my dad's a teacher, you know, so I don't really. Like oh right, teacher. okay. I'm bad rep and go. Ah, I just take the online courses. Now. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that makes sense though. <laughs> That's cool. 
No, that's the thing as well, because um, I have, like, like I think I would really enjoy, like, I, that's why I do the podcast. Like, I love teaching. Like, I love helping people. Yeah. And um, I think teachers are very highly underpaid based on oh, definitely, what yeah. they do. I think they deserve way more credit uh, than what they get. Um, and the thing it, is, as well, I mean, like, you're, if you've come back to, like, online courses, you're not going to get that hands-on feedback. Yep. You're gonna get uni as well. You know, I mean, definitely. I mean, that's probably the most obvious thing, to be honest. <laughs> Do you, yeah, I didn't even think. Of, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the obvious one. And um, a lot of people, I guess, it's like, um, obviously, you're getting taught by certain artists and stuff. Like online courses, don't get me wrong. Like they're great as well. Like I did um, one of the online courses I did was Animation Mentor, um, which was um, when I had an interest for uh, animation when I was in my first year of studying. Um, mm. when it was in my summer holidays and um, the thing that was uh, good about that was um, I got taught people who were in the industry at the time that I wanted to get into um, yeah. but the only downside was um, I was only able to get one hour like this is one of the common trends that I, I feel is where I guess some uh, well quite a few people are doing wrong when it comes to online courses is that they're charging students say for example like a certain couple hundred pounds a month but they're only like talking to this one student like one hour a week mm-hmm. and i feel like if you're if you're providing a service to teach people and you're charging them say a thousand pounds for uh two months or something but you're only giving them one hour per week you're yeah only, it's it's it, that's the one part i think they need to get more fader in terms of um the way they treat the students because obviously and people can make a video like for example i can make a tutorial on how to do something but we don't all work like that in terms of things don't click straight away mm-hmm. and um we we all learn, learn differently and we have to identify that that's the advantage of being like ali says at a university because you have that one-on-one experience yeah because i mean if you're with online stuff, i mean you're you're typically at the mercy of the free market after that you know it's like mm-hmm. artists so charge this or that to yep. give you um specific advice but yeah if you're going to university it's kind of, it's pretty much like a flat rate across the board yeah like, no, matter, no matter where you're where you're from um i mean we have the advantage of tuition being free yeah uh, in scotland yeah in definitely. Scotland. i'm not complaining um, <laughs> <laughs> no and then on top of that i mean uh on my course we got access to digital tutors Oh yeah, of uh, course, yeah, yeah. Free. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was so awesome. So we, we had we had all that kind of kind of backup stuff for anything that the the lecturers or the tutors couldn't really um couldn't really any knowledge gaps. You know, you could you could just go to digital tutors and look up something specific. Um, Perfect. I mean, that 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 helped me a lot. So it's it certainly helped me a lot as well. It's it's the small things that always go the, the like the distance. Mm-hmm. Um. So carrying on uh, from the, uh, the first question, um, the next question is actually um, another question that I, I want to introduce into the podcast is based off, uh, I know I didn't ask you this, uh, I never gave you uh, this question on the list, Ali, so I apologise when I ask you this, uh, yes. but it's like um, it's about the idea of being, uh, I guess, um, having an understanding of business. Um, right. So this is going to be a bit of a, I guess, a wee bit different, but... Um, we talked. I talked about it previously uh, in the last podcast with uh, one of my guests, and uh, I guess when he introduced it, I think it would be nice to hear um, uh, a former student's thoughts as well. So, mm-hmm. do you think um, there's anything that universities or colleges could maybe add in terms of being ready for the uh, the industry in terms of business side of things? Because like a lot of people, obviously. Um, I guess talk about CVs, talk about networking, LinkedIn, and stuff. Mm-hmm. But has there been anything at all that maybe that's helped you a little bit in terms of uh, com- communicating with people, or any skills you think's helped you a wee bit at all? Uh, oh, um, I'm not too sure. Uh, business side of things, I mean. <sighs> Weird, weird. I mean, if you're an artist, yep. I, I don't know if you typically need really need to worry about that. I mean, but I'm only speaking uh, from a point of like, I think I'm a novice essentially. You know, okay. I'm, I've, I've not spent 
uh, that long in the industry to uh, to kind of think about. Yeah, I understand. Anything, anything in terms of um, business strategy or or um, they trying to get an advantage. Yeah, it's. I guess uh, okay. all, all, I, all I know is like I just want to like, um, you know, be a character artist. Definitely. You know, um, and that's kind of the only focus I'm on is just pushing quality of work. You do have to like networking is obviously really important, mm-hmm. uh, and that will just come with time. I reckon. I mean, once you get your foot in the door, yep. Uh, you know. It, yeah it's like a network it's you know you, your your name does will eventually float out there and um because you, you've just made me you've just made me remember something as well that i think would be actually good to maybe change the question out uh, around a wee bit is um obviously since there's like interviews and so forth um yeah. so i think one of the main things that I can maybe change this question about is um i guess the importance of um learning uh like like pu- for example public speaking and like present right. and like presentations at, at, at like university and college mm-hmm. so i think maybe like the best way i can maybe tell this round in terms of the idea of being ready for the industry in terms of business is i guess being able to talk to people yeah and, um, um like if that makes sense yeah it's funny because like i mean a lot <laughs> Uh, that that will help, but because a lot of um, it's, t- it's the typical kind of stereotype of like a, like artists um, mm-hmm. kind of being very like being introverts, you know, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, st- stuck behind their computer screens working on art all the time. Yeah. So yeah, and there there is a lot of you know a lot of artists that are very introverted. Um, but I mean, like, interviews are always going to be a stressful ordeal. Yeah, uh, you're always going to like, oh, oh my god, if I get this job, like, this is it, this is it. Yeah, this is the you know dream dream come true. So you go in there like like your your brain's all over the place. Yeah. Um, but you know, being an artist, you have the art king. The art speaks for you. You know. Yeah, so, it really plays. It plays such a huge part. Yeah, and I so, think I mean, if you're if you're if you've got an outstanding portfolio, even if you, if you, you know, even if you're going into an interview situation and you're like you're a bag of nerves, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much um, yeah. because they are they are these companies are are used to people like that, you know. Yeah, because at, at the day, because like for example, I had a, I had an interview last week. Was it last week? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, last week, and. Um, I'm kind of, I guess, I I wouldn't say I'm introvert. I'm very like I like to talk. I'm not gonna lie. I could talk. <laughs> I could talk nonstop. It's it's kind of a, a thing I've always I've always done. But I think the best thing uh, is like what Ali's saying when it comes to talking and stuff is just be yourself, um, and don't let yeah. um just at the, um like he's saying the art plays such a big part. So at the end of the day, go in go in the interview and just I know it's hard to be relaxed and stuff, but just at the end of the day, focus on just being yourself and um, just do the best you can. Because at the end of the day, it's like as long as you've proved in your portfolio or your art test and uh, that you can do it, they they won't they won't over they won't worry. Because at the end of the day, it's like as long as you're being respectful and you're a nice person, you're sorted. Yeah, if you're if you if you're a likable person, then that's all that really matters. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and um, and then they're just gonna yeah they're gonna look at your work and and say yeah you're, you've you're Good, good enough to get this job. And, Perfect. You know, um, well, thank you. I, like, I, I hate like presentations and stuff as well. <laughs> that's, I think that, like, that's the crazy. Yeah. That's the crazy thing is though. It's like um, I think it's because maybe people are introduced um it enough, but it's like um, and obviously it depends on like your environment and so forth, and like who, who you surround yourself by and stuff. Uh, what you get taught early on and stuff. But I think it's like. It's, it's it's crazy to, to see how like so many people hate them because it's it's weird. There was this, I I don't believe it's true, but there was this thing I heard that some people uh, more people hate public speaking than death. Like <laughs> there was like this there was this crazy thing that uh, there was a uh, whole PowerPoint. I think I was watching on TEDx, and um, they were doing a talk about public speaking, and yeah. it was like so many people 
are afraid of it but it's like the one the, the biggest approach i'm i've always done when it comes to learning to get to increase your confidence and public speaking is at the end of the day like for example these people are there to watch you and stuff right and they're not gonna they're probably not gonna remember uh anything that you like for example anything that you did oh, no, yeah, the next yeah. day so it's like I mean, what's the point of stressing about it like yeah. it's not it's, it's not like they're like oh my god that person uh maybe twitch their neck once for one second and they're they're not gonna they're not gonna stress about it so i've always tried to like approach it of um um literally just going in and um like take a take a take a breather and just um don't worry about what people think about you i know it's hard for a lot of people like a lot of people get oh, stressed out and that but it, mm-hmm. it, it's it's, an, it's 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 a very big subject it, i think it just takes time of uh, at the end of the day it's just practice yeah, I was like, like I was, I was always thinking, like, oh, I, I don't want to talk about myself or anything like that. Right. Me. Like, nobody cares. Like, yeah. what That's far right. <laughs> that's, like, that's the only thing I kind of thought about. It. Yeah, it's like, can yeah. I just show stuff or, or, you know, if it's like, or you, you have to make up like a presentation about some topic or mm-hmm. something. You're just like. You, the back of your mind you're like i don't know what i'm talking about like i don't know anything about this <laughs> yeah it's like your, your mind just freezes for, like in uh, certain cases and you start changing what you originally planned and yeah. um, that's why i tend to like i like to go with the flow with certain things and like try and naturally just do it if that makes sense yeah um, mm-hmm. but that, and that's awesome thanks for that I, like i remember one presentation i did at uni and it was like i'm looking back on it i'm like what, what was that on about because <laughs> It was like it was something like, um, uh, you know, s- s- the difference between it was like story, the importance of story in games, something right. like that. And then I'm like, I'm like, yeah, story has to trump gameplay, or <laughs> <laughs> the story is the most important thing. Like, was, yeah. yeah. And I'm like looking back, and I'm like, what? No, like <laughs> game gameplay is the most important thing, you idiot. Like, why yeah. Like, <laughs> it's the, like, people watch, the people watching that must have just thought like what's going are on? on the, are you on the right course mate like, <laughs> like, I, compl- I completely should you going create, creative writing course or something like that you know? yeah definitely like um, <laughs> that's brilliant like um, I'm not sure um, like obviously I've we've covered a lot of different topics and stuff but is is there is there anything that you want to maybe bring up in terms of like is there any main things that you you maybe wish you've done over the last five years um, or six years that you wish you could change, or is there any like final topics that you you'd like to bring up um, before we uh, close the podcast? Um, is anything come to mind? I would say like I, I really wish like I kind of uh, you know got my head around what the direction I really wanted to take. Okay. I, I, like, I wish I'd, I'd done that a lot sooner, you mm-hmm. know, instead of um, carrying on with 2D for so long. Okay. Uh, I think that's like, that's a real important thing, I think, for a lot, of, uh, I can imagine, for a lot of new students going in, and like I've said before, you're all kind of, you're, you're, you don't really know what kind of avenue you want to go down. Yeah. you really got to try and figure that out as quickly as, po- as, as possible because I mean like I'm I mean especially f- for me like it was the two years after graduating and all that it was just like more time that I'm like thinking is this actually going to happen you know and like you know turning I'm 31 pretty soon you know so yeah. it's like you're like oh my god like I just, why am I not why am I not working in this in like doing what I want to do uh, yeah yeah but like, don't you know? Don't worry about that. Yeah. But um, just like you know, kind of keep it at the back of your mind, like, right, you know, let's do it. You know, get 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 going as quickly as possible with what kind of what you want to do. Um, it's like just don't let anything phase you. Like, I, I know a lot of people ask, for example, like if you're just doing a like a normal job at the moment, like don't let anything um affect your decision to trace your like your main dream as corny as it may sound for some people but you you just have to keep working at, at your craft until you yeah. until you get it and it's um it's as simple as that there's no complicated like there's no complicated 
uh, part about it. It's just down to doing the craft. And yeah. um, don't I? I wouldn't go, don't get disheartened about you know getting rejected from a job or mm-hmm. or anything. I mean, I I applied for so much stuff, rejection, rejection. You know, <laughs> but you can't. You really can't uh, give up. That's like just a no go. You know. Um, because it will it will happen it will happen like I, I've seen I'm, I'm not, it wasn't too long ago it was a I think someone on, on LinkedIn or something uh, and they were like oh right um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've graduated now but then you're in that limbo of like right what the hell now what, what, how do I you know, how, do I, how do I get a job right? yeah and so the post was like you know they were frantic you know like what am I meant to do and all that and I was just like right I'll, I'll, I'll send a message like just keep going because I don't like the two years after uni I was like so many times I was like the you know the bad thoughts come into your head like this isn't going to happen you yeah. know <laughs> but then but it's just like and then uh, you know um, like I went to Australia yeah. To you know, to try and to try and find it because I was like, right, I'm not going, I'm not getting anywhere here. So why don't I just try and go out into the world? And Australia was the easiest place to get to. Unfortunately, there isn't. From what I could see, there's not much uh, in Australia game industry kind of stuff going on over there. I could right. be wrong, but from what I saw, there wasn't too much. Um, yeah. So it was just a big holiday <laughs> essentially. And I was like thinking, like, like, why I'm over here? Like, what's going on? And but then the great thing, though, the one thing I really respect about that, though, is um, it's the fact that you tried something different, and it's like mm-hmm. it's getting out of that that comfort zone, and it's like trying to acknowledge that there's there's not just one path to everything. There's different routes you can take to get your way into the door and stuff. And for example, that path that you took to go to Australia to see if, if there was an option there, like, you, at least you tried. At least you knew. If you know what I mean. And like I think when it comes mm-hmm. to like what Ali's um Ali's saying here is like um when you finish university, um I this is what I also think you should be doing during your university and it's like obviously it's a hard question, like where like where do I w- uh, want to work for my whole life or what do I want to do for my career? It's a big question, it's one of the biggest questions you'll ever ask in your life. Mm-hmm. And it's but it's like don't stop looking for it and it's uh, and at the end of the day, one of the biggest things that sell to me is I am um, reaching out to artists like mentors in a way who can help you get to the exact place that you weren't where, where you want to go yeah oh yeah i mean like yeah don't don't hesitate to like ask I mean, yeah like, exactly yeah that's another one like don't be afraid to to ask out um like ask uh-huh. people questions and stuff and i and i think like so many people um <coughs> I, I guess think that certain i guess certain artists who are so skilled have like a certain like level way above them that they don't have the right to ask my question like whereas, <laughs> whereas i just pest like i literally ask qu- questions all the time and <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's the only way i was able to get better yeah. um, i mean yeah you, you might get those kind of people i mean i, I don't yeah. know <laughs> but um so to the, yeah but there's no harm in, in, in asking. asking for advice or, or anything like that you know even if it's like some like really high-end artist you never know. Like, fire them a question; they might, they might get back to you. Like, yeah, you, you never know. Like, because if I didn't reach out to you about substance painter in fourth year, um, I wouldn't have known substance at all. And, <laughs> like, I, uh, you, you, you would have found out about it eventually, but <laughs> well, I, I only had so much. I only had so much time left because, because you, you literally taught me in like two weeks to to learn <laughs> substance painter, and I only had a few months left of my my honors project. Oh yeah, that's yeah. That's that was. Right. Yeah, that's another advice I, I would say to anyone listening. Don't change your honours project with t- like two months left to go of the year. <laughs> uh, that's the biggest tip I'll give you guys today. Don't don't ever do that because I went from character art to environment art with two like a few months left. So oh uh, uh, yeah, I would um, I would not recommend that. No, but, but bad idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much for uh, uh, coming on, Ali, and uh, all the things that you've said today. It's really helped out, and it's uh, it means yeah. a lot. Thanks, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, like I said, yeah. um, anyone who's listening, um, make sure to go follow um, Ali on ArtStation. Um, there'll be a few other um, 
what is there a few other things you wanted me to show or is there any like social medias that you like me to share oh, that's, I mean our station is, is good enough if you want to have a look at my, my stuff and Perfect. Um, I, hopefully I, I want to like try and um, get some more breakdowns and stuff going uh, I might I might try and um, put something together for uh, what I'm working on just now Perfect. Uh, the personal piece so that's yeah if you like I don't know how much they help they are because I mean I suppose like the what yeah any kind of breakdown or tutorial or something like that is, is good to see and awesome. I have a thing against um, charging people for that kind of stuff but yeah, that's like <laughs> that's a different kind of conversation so I yeah just keep, yeah just uh, keep a look at my art station and yeah, if there's hopefully some stuff will help you out or whatever. Amazing. Um, mm -hmm. What what I always do as well is um, I'll put a slideshow of uh, all of Ali's work, um, all his favourite pieces on the on the background. So as you're watching this, you you would have already seen tons of his artwork, and um, just make sure to uh, select his link and uh, give him a follow because uh, it'll be great. Um, mm -hmm. But once again, thanks for coming on. Um, and yeah, no uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like; it'll be much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, there's going to be hopefully uh, there's a few more podcasts uh, going to be coming uh, coming on in the next few weeks. So make sure to come and check them out. Make sure to turn on notifications, uh, ring ring the bell; that'll be much appreciated. And thanks again, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching or listening, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, bye for now. Yes.